Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you a bit later than usual. Apologies for that, I had quite a bit on today, so I haven't really been able to get round to recording the video, but I wanted to still do something ahead of uh, what is going to be a really interesting game, I think, tomorrow night. Arsenal taking on Wimbledon in the Carabao Cup at the Emirates, looking like a very good crowd for that one as well, considering the game, the opposition. About 48,000 tickets have been sold. Of course, that is sold. So not necessarily that's how many is going to come through the door. We all know and laugh about some of Arsenal's attendances over the years. But apparently 48,000 have been sold. So we should get a decent enough crowd in there tomorrow night, which hopefully should, should make for a decent atmosphere. Lots of Wimbledon fans coming in as well. So that will help with that as well. And it could be an interesting game. I think um, obviously we're going to see changes. We're going to see plenty of changes. Mikel's been speaking about it ahead of the game. And he said... Um, I said, I hope that we can put out our strongest team. That means that some of the players that have performed really well and we can give really strong performance. That is what we want to do. Um, he was asked about giving players minutes who deserve it. And he said, absolutely. Um, you have to praise that for sure. Let's see what's available, see who's available, how they recover and what the best way to approach the game is. So I think when you look at what he did against West Brom in the Arsenal's first game, which was the second round, uh, he still went pretty, pretty strong. It wasn't back in the old days of Arsene Wenger when you'd have all the kids in at this sort of stage of the season, you know, sort of everyone from the 21. So I don't think we're going to see that again tomorrow. I think you, when you look at who's on the bench and he needs min who needs minutes who are very senior players, you're looking at people like Martinelli, Lacazette, Eddie Nketiah, Balogun, uh, people like that, Chambers, Mary, Holden, Tavares, Kalasnach, Cedric, all those sort of players, you, you would expect they would get minutes as well. But we, I think we're all hoping that we see one or two. One specifically, I think um, everyone's hoping to get a sort of glimpse of tomorrow. And that is Charlie Patino, the Arsenal wonder kid, as uh, he is known. Um, 17 years old midfielder. I'm sure you've all seen him by now. Um, you know, immensely talented player. I've spoken about him many times on these videos before about just how highly rated he has been at Arsenal. And now he's right on the verge of making that first team debut. Whether it comes tomorrow night, we'll have to wait and see. But he is right, right there. Now he's been a sensational start really to the season for Patino. Uh, spent a lot of time training with the first team. Has really, really impressed um, Mikel Arteta and especially other senior players from what I'm told as well with his performances in training, not just in training as well, in that behind closed doors game against Brentford during the last international break when he came on for Elneny, I think about half an hour in when Elneny got injured and Patino played for an hour and from what I understand he left an awful lot of senior players in that Arsenal team, very, very impressed with the way he handled himself, his performance um, and he's taken that onto his club form this season in terms of the under 23s as well. We all saw that goal he scored against Manchester United. Uh, I think it clocked up over a million views in the day when he scored that one. Left Phil Jones on his backside, lifted the ball over Dean Henderson. Just a quality goal that kind of encapsulated perfectly what Charlie Patino is about. Um, and I think we all like to see him now. You're kind of at that stage of his progress. He's 18 next month. You think back to when Bukayo Saka made his first uh, appearance for Arsenal, he'd only just turned 17. So it's not like Patino's far too young or anything like that. He's not. He's 18 next month. Um, and it just feels like the time is right now with him for him to really get a show in. And with no European football this season and no Europa League group stage games where a lot of Arsenal's youngsters recently, you know, Saka, Smith-Rowe, Willock, players like that have all been blooded in those Europa League group stages and have given them an opportunity with the first team. But Patino doesn't have that this season. So you look at this game against Wimbledon at home, it feels like you know a really good time for Patino to make his debut. So I would love to see him uh, in the squad. I'm not necessarily saying he's going to start or anything like that, but just in the squad, it's, a, like I said, a real good opportunity for him just to, even if he doesn't come on, just to travel with the squad, you know, spend the day with them. They'll go to the hotel in the morning tomorrow, spend the day in the in and around the first team environment, travel to the game, be in the game, doing the warm-up, all that sort of thing would just be a tremendous experience for Tino. And give him a real good boost as well because he's very, you know, when you're that close to the first team, when you can feel it's within touching distance, then it's nice to just be made, just a, a show of faith almost from the manager, a show of trust and... Um, I think everyone in and around Patino would like that as well. You think of him, he signed his first pro contract when he was 17, like, you know, everyone does. 
um, because of the way certain rules are, you can only sign for three years at that point. So, you know, he's only got a couple of years left now. And believe me, there are an awful lot of clubs that know about Charlie Patino. We all know about him. I mean, he's been known about Arsenal for some time. Um, and he's certainly becoming a lot more mainstream now. But, you know, lots of clubs around England and Europe know all about Patino and his potential. He's not, it's an open secret in the in the football world how good he's been and the potential he's got. Um, and, you know, he's very happy at Arsenal from, from all accounts and everyone is very happy with the way he's being handled um, and his progression. It would just be nice. It would be that boost for everyone connected with him if he was given this chance now. Because if he doesn't, you do wonder, is he going to get another chance this season? Because there's no Europa League, you know, if Arsenal end up getting Manchester United or Liverpool in the next round, he's probably not going to get involved in that. So this one, it just feels like the right time. Um so personally, I would absolutely love to go there. I'm really looking forward to the game tomorrow. And I think if I get there and you see Patino's name down on that tee sheet, either in the starting 11 or more likely on the substitute bench, it'd just be a, it'd give everyone a nice little boost. I think it'd be a, uh, certainly a little bit of excitement about possibly seeing him get some get some minutes. And the way he's played this season since the start of it for the 23s and for the 21s against Swindon in the EFL Trophy, you know, and that was a senior Swindon side, and Patino is fantastic in that game, easily showing that he can cope with the physical demands of playing with older players. Um, it just feels like, you know, he kind of warrants this this little uh, reward now of being in a match day squad for the first time. So let's wait and see, fingers crossed. I know plenty of you from your comments to me on social media is excited about him as I am. And so it'd be nice for everyone to uh, to have our first look potentially at Arsenal's midfield. If you don't know much about him, well, he's 17. He joined Arsenal from Luton when he was 11. I think he's progressed very, very quickly through the youth ranks. Always known as very, um, very talented midfielder. Can play in a number of positions. Can play number 10, but from what I understand, he certainly much prefers the sort of number eight role. Uh, very similar. Reminds me of Jack Wiltshire an awful lot when Wiltshire broke through. That sort of that sort of player. Um, had Spanish heritage. His dad, Jules, is Spanish. Has not you know, has said in previous interviews, in a couple of interviews of Arsenal, that you know maybe one day he can see himself playing over in Spain. The Spanish Federation are very, very aware of him. He qualifies to play for the national team through his father, um, and they are very, very aware of him, and they're keeping tabs on the situation. So far, he's played at youth level for England. But obviously we know that doesn't mean that when it comes to senior level, that's the country he's going to pick. So he's got the choice of England or Spain. And uh, the, both those FAs will be fighting over who gets him, such as the talent of him. So that's my little spiel on Charlie Patino. And fingers crossed, we might get our first look at him tomorrow night. Um, Team news-wise, Arsenal have issued their latest update ahead of the game. Not really much to report on that. Jack Granit Xhaka suspended. We all know that. It's his last game. Uh, he'll be back available for the Spurs match at the weekend. Mohamed Elneny being assessed. He's back in training after his injury being assessed. I think if Elneny comes back in, then that might lessen the chance of, El of uh, Patino getting a, a bit of a go. So um, maybe maybe uh, Arsenal can hold off bringing Mohamed Elneny back in for that game. I talked about the sort of tickets and how Arsenal have sold, or um, yeah, tickets sold about 48,000. Mikel has been speaking about the connection with the fans today it's really interesting this i think when you go to games and certainly the last few this season even the chelsea game so much at home but i think it's very important to sort of split social media the feel of the atmosphere of being an arsenal fan on social media to actually being at the games because if you just concentrate on what is said on social media you feel like everyone is against arsenal at the moment and it really doesn't feel like that when you're in stadiums you go to the you've been the west brom away game in the cup the Burnley away game on Saturday, the Norwich game, I mean, the atmospheres were fantastic. And every, the fans were really backing the team throughout, even in those that Norwich and Burnley game when it was nil-nil for a long, um, for a certain amount of time. In the Norwich game, especially at home, that easily could have turned, given the situation and Arsenal struggled to break them down initially. But everyone stayed and you couldn't... And at the end of those two away games, the West Brom and the Burnley game, Arsenal players were giving away their shirts and you could just feel a bit of sense of connection and Mikel was asked about that and he said Look, I'm really happy to hear uh, that tickets are going well for the Wimbledon game uh, because the boys are really looking forward to playing at the Emirates again um, in the cup winning the game is the only priority now we'll think about Spurs and how special that will be um, on Saturday he went on I'm just going to try and find it here it wasn't actually the bit that I was uh, going to be reading it was something else so let's try and 
find it for you. He talked about the bond between the players and the sporters. He said, I, I felt it. I felt there was some connection building. I think they realised what they've done and the players have to show that appreciation and gratitude like they did. He's talking about handing over the shirts there. This only brings cohesion, more connection and more relationships, closer relationships, and that will strengthen the team for sure. Um, and I, I just think it's an important thing because sometimes you can get bogged down and I certainly can because I you know I have to live on social media an awful lot of the time to see what's going on and to report on stuff on social media and sometimes you can just get swamped and overwhelmed by the negativity that social media brings and um and feel like I remember going to that Norwich game and thinking oh this is going to be a horrible atmosphere everyone's going to turn it's going to be really really bad um but it was the absolute opposite and so I think I got sucked into the trap as well of thinking it and um uh, and so I think it was in, in quite interesting what Mikel Arteta had to say there, and certainly in those away games, certainly against Burnley at Saturday, the connection f- between that team felt strong. So if you look at Ramsdale, the way the fans have taken Ramsdale to their heart, the way he seems to have responded to them, Tommy Asu as well. You know, just a, I think it's the new look of the Arsenal side at the moment with some of the new signings in, a bit of a freshness about it. And um, it just seems like the fans have taken. There's some really good new chance going on. Um, new players have got their new chance. And it's just been a bit of a, for once, the last couple of weeks, it's actually been quite enjoyable travelling and watching Arsenal and feeling that atmosphere. Because sometimes, like I said, you can kind of get swamped with the negativity of it all. But hey, we all know this is football. A couple of defeats and it's all going to change. And there's certainly a big game looming on Saturday, which Arsenal cannot afford to lose but before that it is Norwich uh, sorry Norwich it is Wimbledon and uh, hopefully we should enjoy that one tomorrow night thank you very much for watching today's video everyone appreciate your time as always I shall speak to you